Hi there. Now, in this video, I want to just show you a particular rule that happens when you've got two perpendicular vectors in relation to the scalar product. If those two vectors, let's say they're A and B, and in three dimensions, they've got components A1, A2, A3, and for B, components B1, B2, and B3, in the i, j, and k directions respectively, then you may remember that if we've got the angle between them is defined, say, as theta, then by the scalar product, the cosine of angle theta was defined as equaling a dot b all divided by the magnitude of a times the magnitude of b, where a dot b was equal to a1 b1 plus a2 b2 plus a3 b3. And the modulus of each of the vectors was equal to the square root of the sum of the squares of their components. So looking at the special case when we have the vectors a and b being perpendicular, that is, if theta equals 90 degrees, then the cosine of 90 degrees equals 0. So if that's the case, then with this fraction here, the fraction must equal 0. And that means that a dot b must equal 0. So therefore, we have this important rule that for perpendicular vectors, a dot b must equal 0. And when you're working with vectors like we've got here, it would follow then by this rule here that a1 b1 plus a2 b2 plus a3 b3 must equal 0. And this is a very important rule. So just border that, and what we'll do is I'll run through a couple of examples. In fact, you might even want to try them yourself, which just demonstrate how we can use this. And here are the examples. What we've got first of all then is are the vectors a and b perpendicular, where we've got a is defined as 3i minus 4j plus 2k, and b as i minus 2j minus 3k? Well, we start just by working out what a dot b is. If they're perpendicular, we would expect it to come to 0. So in the usual way, we'll do 3 times the 1 here. Okay, I'll show the working rather than just putting the answers only. And then to this, we do minus 4 times minus 2. So we've got minus 4 times minus 2, and then we add 2 times minus 3. OK? And so if you work this out, you find you end up with 5. 5's not equal to 0. So the conclusion is then that the vectors a and b are not perpendicular. Now in the next question, we're asked to find the value of x, for which the vectors a equaling 2xi minus xj plus k and b equals xi plus j minus 3k are perpendicular. Well, if they're perpendicular, we know that a dot b must equal 0. So I'll start by saying that since a dot b must equal 0, then what we've got is 2x times the x here, so we've got therefore 2x squared, and then we've got minus x times the 1 there, that's going to be minus x, and then we've got 1 times minus 3, which is minus 3, that must equal 0. So we've got a quadratic equation here, which this one will factorise in fact, so just have two brackets, it will equal 0. In the front here will be 2x times x to give me the 2x squared. And then I'm going to need minus 3 here and plus 1 here to give me minus 3. And then I'm going to get 2x minus 3x, which gives me that minus x. So therefore, in the usual way, 2x minus 3 must equal 0, or the other factor, x plus 1, must equal 0. And so if I just come down here, then from 2x minus 3 equaling 0, we therefore have x equals 1 and a half or 3 over 2. And from x plus 1 equaling 0, we see that x 
equals minus 1. So I hope that's given you some idea then how we can apply the scalar product for perpendicular vectors. Remember this rule that a dot b must always equal 0. Okay?